There are countless, many unique animal species in our world, many of which haven't even been discovered yet. Individuals from different but genetically closely related species do occasionally mate and produce offsprings, and the result is a hybrid. A distinct creature that shares genetic traits of both a parent species and is many times stronger or larger than the originals. Some half-breeds are well known, like the mule, which is a horse and donkey mix. But most are more rare. Some may look fake, but we assure you, they're in fact completely real. And before you ask, yes, the Liger is on this list. Now enough chit-chat. Here are the top 20 most amazing animal hybrids. Welcome back to Top 5 Best, everybody. Before this video starts, I want you to go down right now and hit that like button. Also, while you're down there, make sure to subscribe for more videos. If you do subscribe, then also hit that bell icon next to the subscribe button, so that way you get every piece of content that this channel puts out. Now here's a real treat. If you have liked this video and you are subscribed to us, write down in the comments, I subscribed, and I'll reply back to 100 lucky yeah. individuals. Let's get started, shall we? Number 20, Wolf Dog. A mixture between a wolf and a dog, which is pretty much self-explanatory. Hence the title. One of the main issues that many researchers in wolf dog communities are faced with is identifying wolf dogs from pure dogs in any of the wolf species mixed into the hybrid. The most common method used by various wolf dog communities is phenotyping, a method that involves observing the animal's physical features. This method is often favored for many in determining the degree of wolf and northern spritz type dog that is in a hybrid. Evidence for prehistoric domesticated wolf dogs in the Americas dates back to at least 10,000 years while fossil evidence in Europe points to their use in hunting mammoths. It is a beautiful animal, just to say the least. Number 19, the Liger. Eh, I told you it was gonna be here. Fate didn't expect him to be here so early, however. A crossbreed of the Tiger and a Lion, self-explanatory, the Liger is distinct from the similar hybrid Tigon and is the largest of all known extant felines. They typically like to swim, which is a characteristic of tigers, and they are also very sociable, much like lions. Notably, ligers typically grow larger and are stronger than either parent species, unlike tigons. The history of the lion-tiger hybrid dates to at least the early 19th century in India. In 1798, Etienne Geoffrey Saint Hilaire, I hope I said that right, made a color plate of the offspring of a lion and a tiger. The Port Manchu liger was coined by the 1930s. Number 18. The Zebroid. Ah, the Zebroid. A combination of a donkey and a zebra. Zebroids have been bred since the 19th century. Charles Darwin noted several zebra hybrids in his works. Zebroid is a term generally used for all zebra hybrids, and the different hybrids are generally named using a portmanteau of the sire's name and the dam's name. There is generally no distinction made as to when zebras are crossbred. They develop some form of dwarfism, breeding of different branches of the equine family, which does not occur in the wild and generally results in infertile offspring. Zebroids physically resemble their non-zebra parent, but are striped like a zebra. The stripes generally do not cover the whole body and might be confined to the legs or spread onto parts of the body or neck. Number 17, the Zorse. Okay, I know I said that it's pretty indistinguishable, but, well, here's a good example of another one. A zebra and a horse hybrid. Honestly, this animal is a sight for sore eyes, and a zorse is the offspring of a zebra stallion and a horse's mare. This cross is also called a zebrula, zebrul, or zebra mule. The rare reverse pairing is sometimes called a horbra, hebra, zebrini, or zebrat. Like most other hybrids, the zorse is sterile. Zorses combine the zebra striping overlaid on colored areas of the hybrid's coat. Zorses are most often bred using solid colored horses. If the horse parent is piebald, which is black and white, or skewbald, other color and white, the Zorus may just inherit the dominant depigmentation genes for white patches. It is understood that Tobiano, the most common white modifier found in the horse, directly interacts with the Zorus coat to get the white markings. Only the non-depigmented areas will have zebra striping, resulting in a Zorus with white patches and striped patches. This effect is seen in a zebroid named Eclis, a hebra rather than a zorus, born in Struckenbach, Germany, in 2007 to a zebra mare called Eclipse and a stallion called Ulysses. Number 16, Leopon. A combination of a lion and a leopard. These beautiful hybrids are produced in captivity and are unlikely to occur in the wild. The first documented Leopon was bred at Kolhapur, India in 1910. Its skin was sent to Reginald Inns Pacock by Walter Samuel Millard, the secretary of the Bombay Natural History Society. It was a cross between a large leopard and a lioness. Two cows were born, one of which died aged at 2.5 months and the other was still living when Pacock was described it in 1912. Pacock wrote that it was spotted like a leopard, but that the spots on its sides were smaller and closer set than those of an Indian leopard and were brown and indistinct like the fading spots of a juvenile lion. 
really all you can say at this point, that's a really beautiful little creature. Number 15, Dezo. A yak and a domestic cow combination. Kinda weird, right? Yeah, I thought so too. The word Dezo technically refers to a male hybrid, while as a female it is known as a Dezomo or Zome. As they are a product of the hybrid genetic phenomenon of hybrid vigor, they are larger and stronger than yak or cattle from that region. Prized in Tibet and Mongolia for their meat and quantity of milk they produce, they are larger and stronger than both cows and yaks. As with the beefalo, however, it's believed that both animal breeds in the region now have contaminated genes. Number 14, a Jeep. 6.3 liter V12 situated just after the front wheels. No, not the car, you sillies. Another rare animal as the offspring of goat and sheep pairings are usually stillborn, meaning they don't live to see the light of day. Honestly, I want one. They're cute, and honestly, jeeps look better than dogs. Just an opinion, I guess. Don't hate. I mean, I own two dogs. I love them. Number 13, a growler bear. Also called pizzly bears, most growler bears live in zoos, although there have been a few confirmed sightings in the wild. A growler bear is a rare ursid hybrid that has occurred both in captivity and in the wild. In 2006, the occurrence of this hybrid in nature was confirmed by testing the DNA of a unique-looking bear that had been shot under Sacha's Harbor, Northwest Territories on Banks Island in the Canadian Arctic. Possible wild-bred polar bear-grizzly bear hybrids have been reported and shot in the past, but DNA tests were not available to verify the bear's ancestry. Number 12, the Koi Wolf. If you thought wolves alone were beautiful, you should take a look at these breathtaking koi wolves. Coyotes and eastern wolves only diverged some 150 to 300,000 years ago, and the two are able to reproduce offspring. The resulting koi wolves share many behavioral characteristics and are between the coyote and wolf in size. Hybrids of any combination tend to be larger than coyotes and show behaviors interdeterminate between coyotes and the other parent species. In one captive hybrid experiment, hybrid pups from a male northwestern gray wolf and a female coyote were measured shortly after birth with an average on their weights, total lengths, and head lengths. Body lengths as well, hind foot lengths, shoulder circumferences, and head circumferences compared with those on pure coyote pups at birth. Number 11, Savannah Cat. These beautiful creatures have been described as dog-like, enjoying games of fetch, wagging their tails, and having no fear of water. They are extremely expensive to say the least, and the unusual cross became popular among breeders at the end of the 1990s, and in 2001, the International Cat Association, or TICA, accepted it as a new registered breed. In May 2012, TICA accepted it as a championship breed. The Savannah's tall and slim build gives them the appearance of greater size than their actual weight. Size is very dependent on generation and sex, with the hybrid male cat usually being the largest. Number 10, a Wolpin. False killer whales actually come from the same family as dolphins, but despite this, they are extremely rare. Only one wolfin exists in captivity, and the name implies a hybrid of whale and dolphin, both are within the oceanic dolphin family, which is within the toothed whale suborder. They are extremely intermediate between both parents, since a bottlenose may have about 88 teeth and a false killer whale has about 44. A wolfin will have 66. They are smaller than a false killer whale, but are longer than a normal bottlenose. Huh. With all that dolphin in them, I wonder if they're just as big as jerks. Or maybe there's a nice little balance where they're just kind of pleasant. Number 9, a beefalo. Also called Catolo, they've been around since 1800 and are hardier than cattle and do less ecological damage when grazing. Unfortunately, as a result of the breeding, it's believed that only four wild buffalo herds exist that aren't contaminated by cow genes. Beefalo are primarily cattle in genetics and appearance, with the breed association defining a full beefalo as one with 3 8 or 37.5% bison genetics, while animals with higher percentages of bison genetics are called bison hybrids. Number 8, Penny. A crossing between a female donkey and a male horse, they're slightly smaller than mules, but they're also much less common. Hennies on average are slightly smaller than mules in part because donkeys are generally smaller than horses and growth potential of equine offspring is influenced by the size of the dam's womb. Like mules, hennies do come in many sizes. This is because donkeys come in many sizes, from miniatures as small as 24 inches, and other than size, some additional minor differences occur that can be used to distinguish between mules and hennies. The head of a hennie is said to resemble that of a horse more than it does a mule, so with shorter ears, although these are still longer than those of horses, and more horse-like manes and tails than mules. Number 7, Narluga. Extremely rare, although there has recently been an increase in sightings in the North Atlantic. Sadly, these beautiful animals are rare to the point where there isn't much research on them, unfortunately, mainly due to the fact of there being rare sightings of them. On the other hand, they're too cute not to be on this list. I mean, look at that smile. No. 
Number 6. Kama First produced at the Camel Reproduction Center in Dubai in 1988 via artificial insemination, they were created for their fur and use of pack animals. Only five were ever crossbred, and the first camel was born on January 14, 1998. The aim was to create an animal capable of higher wool production than the llama, with the size and strength of a camel and a cooperative temperament. An adult dromedary camel can weigh up to six times as much as a llama, so the hybrid needs to be produced by artificial insemination. Insemination of a female llama with sperm from a male dromedary camel has been the only successful combination. Inseminating a female camel with llama sperm has not produced viable offspring. Number 5. Moulard Bred for food, the moulard is unable to produce offspring. Eh, it's kind of sad, am I right? Is it just me? Eh, it's probably just me. The White Muscovy and Pekin are the two most common purebred, commercially farmed ducks. Hybrids of the two are hardier and calmer in addition to exhibiting natural hybrid vigor. The incubation period of the hybrid eggs is between the Mallard and Muscovy with an average of 32 days. About half of the eggs hatch in the Mallard ducks, Mallards tend to combine certain traits of the parent breeds. Due to their Muscovy heritage, they produce leaner meat than Pekins. Females tend to be raised for meat, while the males are used for foie gras. Like Muscovy ducks, Mullards have claws on their feet but do not fly and perch. Instead, they prefer to stay on water, as Pekins do. Number 4. Zubron Stronger and more resistant to disease, they were initially thought to be a possible replacement for cattle. Now only a small herd exists in Białowieski National Park in Poland. The Zubron was first created by Leopold Waliski in 1847, although the hybrid may also have appeared at an earlier time. After World War I, various scientists considered Zubron a possible replacement for domestic cattle. Zubron turned out to be more durable and less prone to disease. In addition, the animal could be bred on marginal grazing land with no farm infrastructure and with minimal husbandry in huge state agricultural farms. Number 3. Jack Lion Another rare and even more beautiful lion hybrid combination, to say the very least. A Jaglion or Jaguan is the offspring between a male jaguar and a female lion. A mounted display is at the Walter Rothschild Zoological Museum in Hertfordshire, England. It has the lion's background color, brown jaguar-like rosettes, and the powerful build of the jaguar. Jazara, the female, and Tsunami, the male, were the result of an unintended mating between a black jaguar called Diablo and a lioness called Lola, which had been hand-raised together and were inseparable. They were kept apart when Lola came into Ostras. Tsunami is spotted, but Jazara is a melanistic dominant melanism gene. It was not previously known how the Jaguar's dominant melanism gene would interact with lion coloration genes. Pretty cool if you ask me. Yeah, nothing really else to say on this one. Number 2. The Bengal Cat The earliest mention of an Asian leopard cat and domestic cross was in 1889, when Harrison Weir wrote of them in Our Cats and All About Them. However, in 1927, C. Boating Kloss wrote to the magazine Cat Gossip regarding hybrids between wild and domestic cats in Malaya. His statement is as follows. I have never heard of hybrids between Bengalnesis, the leopard cat, and domestic cats. One of the wild tribes of the Malay Peninsula has domesticated cats, and I have seen the woman suckling Bengalnesis kittens, but I do not know where the latter survive and breed with the others. The Bengal cat is more of a costly house cat than an out-in-the-wild type of cat. Number 1. Yeez. As amazing and interesting as these goat hybrids may seem, sadly they're really rare too. There isn't much research, the only thing that I could find about the EA's goat hybrid is that they have an amazing immune system. Sorry, I know this is kind of a boring one entry, but that's all I could find. And that is it for our list today. Tell me down in the comments below, do you think some of these names sound more fitting in Monster Hunter? If you like this video, however, why not give us a like and maybe even subscribe to us? It helps us out immensely and allows you to see even more zany videos from us. With that said, I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you next video.